Hello everybody and welcome back to Pat Problems with Helena and Kat. My name is Kat, I'm the Physics Access Officer at Oxford University and today I'm going to be taking you through my solution to question 8 of the 2014 Pat paper. This question, as you can see, is a maths question, just like question 7 that I took you through a couple of weeks ago. But to me, this question is really interesting because I find it much harder at the start of this question than as we go through the question. So let's take a look at that and I'll explain to you why that is. This question asks, if f of x is equal to e to the x for x is less than zero, and f of x is equal to e to the negative x plus 2x for x is greater than or equal to zero, sketch the function f of x and its first, second, and third derivatives. So straight away, we know that there are two parts to this question. We need to know what f of x is, and what its first, second and third derivatives are. And we also need to know what f of x looks like and what those first, second and third derivatives look like. Personally, I would start with a couple of reminder sketches because I can see from this question that I'm at the very least going to need to sketch e to the x and e to the negative x. And I can take a guess from the fact that this involves derivatives, I'm going to need some related shapes and functions. So I would start just by reminding myself of what these look like and having a few things in point. I know that the basic curve of y equals e to the x or of f of x equals e to the x is a curve which passes through the point 0, 1 and a curve which has an asymptote on the x axis. I know that f of x is equal to e to the negative x is the reflection of that, again, with an asymptote, and that's gonna be quite useful for me to know. I know that negative e to the negative x is the reflection of that that passes through the point zero, negative one, and I think that's probably all I need to know to start me off, that's a really good start. So let's come back to our original question now that we've thought about those curves. And our first curve, f of x, we'll use our nice curly bracket, set this up properly, is e to the x for x is less than zero, and e to the negative x plus 2x for x is greater than or equal to zero. Let's get this sketched. The first part for x is less than or equal to zero is really straightforward. We've actually already sketched it up here. It's this portion of the curve. So we know it comes as far as zero, one, and we know it's got that asymptote. So far, so good. For x is greater than or equal to zero, this is quite a tricky one, and I find it easier to think about this as not e to the negative x plus 2x, but as 2x plus e to the negative x. Let me explain why that makes more sense to me. I'm going to come back up next to my example sketches. This might not make more sense to you, but to me this really helps because I know that a, curve, a straight line, rather, y equals 2x, is going to look like this. And I know that 2x plus e to the negative x means that I've got a curve y equals 2x shifted vertically by the value of e to the negative x. I've got the curve of e to the negative x here, and I can see that if x is greater than or equal to zero, e to the negative x is always positive. It's a decreasing positive value, but it is a positive value, which means that my line y equals 2x, if shifted up by this positive value, is actually going to form a curve. It's going to form a curve that starts here and actually looks really similar to e to the x. But that's because of my decreasing positive value that I've added to 2x. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, shove some values into your calculator or use a program and you should be able to make sense of that. As I said, 
I think this question is most difficult at the start, because from here on in, actually, this question is way simpler. So let's move on to finding the first derivatives of our function. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So for x is less than zero, my curve is unchanged. The derivative of e to the negative x plus 2x becomes negative e to the negative x plus 2. So far, so good. And that is my value for x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's move on and sketch it. We have the same left hand side, we have the same asymptote coming up to here. But now we want this negative x, negative e, sorry, to the negative x that we sketched right up at the start. We're going to shift this up two places. So my asymptote is now going to sit here at 2. Because I'm moving up from x equals 0 by two places. So let's sketch in that value, make it really clear that we know exactly what this is going to look like. We've got that shape of my curve here mirrored and my asymptote shifted up two places. So we've got our first derivative. Let's move on to our second derivative, f double dashed x. Again, this is unchanged to start us off. e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of negative e to the negative x is positive e to the negative x. And this time our 2 disappears. This question gets easier as we come through. We've now got this curve three times. It's exactly the same. I missed my origin there. Got our clear asymptote and our defined value at 1. And the curve that we want now is e to the negative x. You can probably see why I find it useful to draw these all out at the start. I'm coming down to my asymptote. So we've got f double dashed x. And last but by no means least, we want the third derivative, f triple dashed x. Unsurprisingly, e to the x still differentiates to e to the x. e to the negative x goes to negative e to the negative x. Curve that we last saw up at the start where we were shifting it up by 2, but this time we are not shifting it. So final sketch of the question. Pop in the origin. Same initial curve, negative e to the negative x, which we drew right back at the beginning, is up here. Let me move that up so that everyone can see. Our key point that we need to mark on is negative 1. And we have an asymptote here. It's important to note as well that in this final case, our value of f of x will be undefined when x is equal to 0. We could either indicate that here under the sketch or we could indicate it here on the graph. So there we have it. We have our f of x and its sketch, f dashed x and its sketch, f double dash dashed x and f triple dashed x. I hope that helped and I will see you next week for the next problem. I'll be taking you through question nine. Thank you very much.